uh, my name is Tristan Yen. I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon based in Sydney, uh, specializing in minimally invasive cardiothoracic procedures. Today, we have the privilege to have Professor Martin Misfeld, co-director of uh, Leipzig Heart Center to join us. This morning, we performed um, a complex minimal access aortic procedure on a patient who had um, an aortic root aneurysm. Uh, we did a mini bental procedure and a hemi arch replacement. I'd just like to take the opportunity to um, ask Professor Misfeld to share with us his experience in peripheral cannulation, especially femoral venous and arterial cannulation for uh, mini access procedures. So, Professor Misfeld, how do you do um, femoral arterial cannulation and uh, femoral venous cannulation at Leipzig? So, um, the groin cannulation of both vessels is the preferred cannulation technique for all our minimal invasive mitral procedures. And um, um, you have two options, either um, open cannulation surgically or um, by um, Seldinger technique. We still prefer the open technique because um, we think that um, you cannot risk any complication at all from this peripheral cannulation. Also, with the open access you have um, much more um, much more feeling, uh, especially in elderly patients, quality of the arterial, um, femoral arterial um, vessel. So what we do is we uh, perform an oblique um, incision, a limited skin incision, about two centimeters. Make sure that you don't uh, interfere with the lymph nodes. Um, we only dissect superficial both vessels, perform pursing sutures, and then with the cellular technique, we uh, advance the cannulas. Now it's well, most important that you um, use this technique under echo guidance. Mm -hmm. So you need to have a, um, a skilled um, echocardiographer who tells you that your guiding wires are, are um, in a proper position before you advance um, the cannulas. This is um, um, necessary for the venous cannula, which we start first, because mm -hmm. sometimes the venous um, vessel is a little bit behind the arterial vessel and then also for the arterial vessel where the uh, anesthetist in our center confirms proper position of the guiding wire descending order. So in terms of guiding wire for the venous cannula, do you use a soft guide wire or no, we, a stiff guide wire? We prefer more stiff, gui uh, stiff guiding wires and this has to be confirmed to be in the uh, superior vena cava. Um, it is also most important that the scrub nurse is able to uh, support you in this position, holding the guiding wire in a straight position, mm -hmm. because you don't, you want to avoid um, any any kinking of the mm -hmm. guiding wire, and it has to be confirmed that it doesn't um, go through a patent forearm or oval or so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What if you, when you pass the, uh, this is a multi-stage, uh, multi-perforated femoral venous cannula? What if you've already passed the guide wire and are trying to feed this cannula over the guide wire and you encounter some resistance? Yeah, first of all, I, I use dilators for all my venous cannulations. So I not only um, use this cannula over the guiding wire, I use all dilators. And then usually we, we bend the table a little bit. And then if you feel any resistance, don't um, progress with the procedure. Make sure um, that you don't uh, advance the cannula against any resistance um, at all. Um, so far, um, I haven't experienced any major issues. Um, what I have seen uh, in, in some cases um, is that um, patients develop um, retrograde hematoma because of kinking of the guiding wire. The guiding wire was not in a straight position. Uh, this can occur as a um, complication of um, advancing the venous cannula. Also, before um, you advance the tip of the venous uh, cannula in the superior vena cava, I um, start pulling the um, inner layer of the cannula backwards. Yeah. So once All the, under echo uh, control. Yeah. So once this bit gets into the superior vena cava, you withdraw. Actually before, before, and then I withdraw this and then I advanced, still the guiding wire in the superior vena cava, I advanced the cannula, which then uh, goes into the superior vena cava. Okay. 
But before we move on to arterial uh, cannulation, so what if someone has got a retroperitoneal hematoma? Um, and obviously it can be quite a, a disastrous situation. What do you do about that? Yeah, obviously the patient is then fully heparinized and it can be a disaster. So you may experience some distension of the abdomen mm -hmm. and then you have to immediately um, yeah, access the um, uh, pelvic vein part and then by usually uh, um, opening the abdomen, retroperitoneal access. Yeah. Okay. Because in most of the cases, this is um, the place where the cannula went uh, wrong and perforated mm. Mm. Uh, the vein. Well, we know the uh, iliac vein at the pelvic rim is the vein of death, and uh, once it's perforated, it can lead to very disastrous complications. Okay, so how do you do the arterial femoral venous, femoral arterial cannulation? So, again, we um, just superficial dissection. Put a purse string, mm -hmm. use a 4 or proline, it's a purse string suture. Uh, use a Seldinger technique, I use all available dilatators, mm -hmm. so um, increasing diameter, and then again advance the cannula um, without any resistance and advance it about uh, 10 centimeters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it's um, secured um, at least two times to the skin mm -hmm. and also to the purse string suture. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, with your purse string, do you put Pedestrian on the common femoral artery? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then you go on to a bypass. What do you think about the risk of retrograde perfusion, um, arterial perfusion through the femoral? Um, when we do a mini access um, mitral procedure, um, yes, we have achieved a small incision, a uh, mini thoracotomy incision, but we do have to put patient on bypass uh, by a femoral artery. Do you do um, CT scan, preoperative CT contrast scan to look for arthroma? Yeah, we don't uh, use routinely CT scan all our patients. What we do is uh, we have an idea of the quality of the aorta by pre-op echo where we um, uh, have a look at the descending aorta, also the ascending. If we assume some uh, severe atherosclerotic disease, then you um, or we um, experience some uh, heavy calcification of the femoral artery or even iliac artery, then we um, have the um, possibility to switch arterial cannulation to an axillary excess. Axillary and then we would use a more yeah, endograde approach. Yeah. Mm. So in Leipzig, roughly, what's the um, risk of stroke um, with the femoral um, arterial cannulation? It's um, even if you perform the retrograde. Um, um, perfusion in elderly patients, it's, uh, it's remarkable um, uh, low, I must say. So it's, um, in elderly patients, I would say, um, uh, far under 2%. Under yeah. 2%. And it's very, very probably not all related to the cannulation technique, but also um, applying the cross clamp and release of the cross clamp. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, Professor Misfeld, thank you so much for your time. And thank Pleasure. you for joining us in uh, Senior Ventures Hospital in Sydney. Once again, thank you. Thank you.